you're designing a commercial solar system and you're looking at volt rise. So what method do you use? The millivolt per amp metre method or the cable impedance method? Let's find out. Belly here from Greenwood. This week we're talking volt rise yet again, but we're comparing two different methods. So after watching the video, you'll understand the cable impedance method and how it compares to the millivolt per amp meter method for volt rise calculations on a commercial solar system. Now, if you like these videos, you want to see more of them, hit that subscription button, tell your mates, get them to do the same thing. Let's get stuck into it. With Sol, the Australian and New Zealand standards stipulate a max of 2% volt rise from the point of supply all the way through to the inverter with the largest run uh, and or the biggest load current. Now, AS4777 uses the millivolt per amp meter method, which assumes almost the worst case scenario, but there are other methods to calculate voltage rise. And in this presentation, we will compare the standard method um, with the cable impedance method. So let's start up with uh, asking what is actual volt rise. Now the grid voltage level varies throughout the day and depending on how much power is being drawn from the grid. Now also how much solar is being sent back to the grid. Now for energy to flow the voltage at the inverter is always higher than that at the grid. So issues can occur where cables haven't been sized correctly. If there's too much resistance, then the voltage has to rise. Now in AS4777, volt rise is restricted to 2%, and you can see that in the pic below. Now this is from the point of supply to the last inverter, and the distributor requires this information. The installer must assess the existing cable, or cables, do the necessary calculations, and then this determines the new cabling specs. Now the cables are installed in the following manner. This is very important. The inverter to the PVDB is in copper XLPE 90 degree four coil on earth solid wiring enclosure in air. Enclosed 150 mil cable. PVDB connects to a DB and that's in copper XLPE 90 degree single core solid touching unenclosed 150 mil. Two cables are actually paralleled in this, in this situation. Now, the DB connects to the MSB. We're using copper XLP, 90 degrees, single core again, solid touching, unenclosed, and it's again 150 mil squared, two cables parallel per phase. The MSB connects to the point of supply, We're talking copper XLP, 90 degrees, single core, solid touching, unenclosed, 300 mil squared cable, and there's two cables paralleled per phase. Three phase volt drop rise. Which table and standard? Now AS4777.1 references a table in AS3008. You've got to know AS3008. This reference is table 41, column 6, and you can see that in the table below. So the calculation is V rise equals L times I times VC over 1000. Now, where L is the cable running meters, I is the current, and VC is the millivolt per amp meter factor for the cable in question. And the volt rise is the X amount of volts. Now, volt rise and volt drop is mathematically the same, so it's the same calculation. In our example, we have three 100 kVA inverters. Now, there's a cable to the PVDB, and then to the DB, then to the MSB and then to the point of supply. Uh, you can see that in the table below. We're talking about volt rise here, but cables also have to be selected on their CCC, current carrying capacity as well. And in our example, we have some parallel cables that have been used. In this case, the current is equally distributed between these parallel cables. And this is reflected in the V rise result, of course. Now the V rise from the point of supply of the MSB 
is 0.059%. And the V rise from MSB to DB is 1.38%. Now from the DB to the PVDB, it's 0.42%. And the highest V rise from the PVDB to the inverter is 0.046%. Now this results in a total V rise of 1.918% for the total run. And you can see that in the table below. Now, according to AS3008-2017, a more accurate assessment can be made of the actual voltage drop using the appropriate equation of clause 4.5, and the cable reactance is determined from table 30 to 33. The cable AC resistance is determined from table 34 to 39. Now, the calculation is as follows. VD equals IZC. And this is where VD equals the voltage drop or voltage rise in cable in volts. I is the current flowing in the cable in amperes. Uh, ZC is the impedance of the cable in ohms. And then you've got the calculation of resistance 2C plus X2C, all square rooted, where RC is the cable resistance in ohms and a function of the material size and temperature of the conductors and xc is the cable reactance in ohms again and it's a function of the conductor shape and the cable spacing single phase two wire supply system for a single phase circuit the impedance of the active and neutral conductors is taken into account as these conductors are of the same material and generally the same size, the voltage drop on the circuit is twice what it would be for a single cable. So VD equals ILZC over a thousand. For a balanced three phase circuit, so we're talking inverters, no current is flowing in the neutral conductor. And at any given instant, the current flowing in one active conductor will be balanced by the currents flowing in the other active conductors. So the volt drop per phase to neutral is the volt drop in one cable and the voltage drop between phases is VD equals the square root of 3 times ILZC over 1000. Now the V rise from the inverter to the PVDB is 0.043%. From PVDB to DB is 0.398%. And from DB to MSB is 1.25% and the V rise from the MSB to the point of supply is 0.05%. So we got a total V rise of 1.76%. It can be seen from the two methods outlined that the cable impedance method of determining the voltage rise invariably gives a lower figure. So in most cases, use the millivolt per amp meter method, and this will suffice, but if the result is slightly over 2%, then using another more accurate method may be the way to go. But you gotta remember, not only does the cable have to satisfy all the V-Rise stipulations, but also it has to be able to safely carry the current that the system imposes on it. Thanks for watching our presentation on cable impedance versus the millivolt per amp meter method. Yes, volt rise. I'm Veli from Greenwood. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, especially answers, feel free to drop us a line. And if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, hit that subscription button. See you next time.